ESPN has come out with their top 10 head coaches in college football, and LSU head coach Brian Kelly was not on that list. You know, it's interesting. I was thinking today, one of three things had to have happened for whoever put that list together for ESPN to leave off Brian Kelly. Number one, they simply forgot that Brian Kelly existed in life, and they didn't put him up there. Maybe for some of the reason, they overlooked him on accident and didn't want to make a correction, say that we were wrong. Maybe that happened. I don't think that it did. Or number two, you have somebody at ESPN who is doing a graphic and putting together college head coaches who quite simply has absolutely no idea what they're doing or what they're talking about. Brian Kelly is on seven years of 10 wins, seven years of 10 game or winning 10 games in seven seasons. He's won 74 games in the last seven seasons. And quite honestly, of current head coaches, like current head coaches, he has more wins in the last seven years than anybody. Let me say that again. He's got more wins in the last seven seasons than anybody. Not more than, oh, well, Kirby's got a lot. Yeah, not more than Brian Kelly because you've been a little bit more of a head coach longer than that. But I'm just saying, nobody does. N so maybe somebody who was doing that graphic for ESPN just doesn't like LSU or just doesn't understand what college football is or just didn't do the research. Or it's number three, which is probably what I think happened is, is that they used LSU fans as they normally do for clickbait and media, not putting Brian Kelly in their top 10 of head coaches in college football. Why do they do that? Because they know people like me and they know people like you We'll quote tweet it and get a little upset about it and or act like we're upset about it, even though we're probably not actually upset about it and say, yeah, that's probably not right. It's won 10 games in back-to-back -back seasons for LSU. He won the West in year one. By the way, he inherited a roster that had 39 scholarship players. Even though he overachieved in year one, year two it caught up to him because he just had some issues along the line of scrimmage, and his defensive coordinator sucked. Mitch, he hired, and I get it. But putting guys like Kalen DeBoer, who went to a national championship game, one playoff and national championship game, when Brian Kelly's had multiple appearances, what are we doing putting Kalen DeBoer at two? What are we doing putting Ryan Day ahead of him? Now, if either one of those guys win national championships – Fine. You've never seen Kalen DeBoer coach a game in the SEC. You've seen two seasons worth and a Heisman Trophy winner worth of Brian Kelly coaching in the SEC. And all he did, oh, and all I heard, too, was when Brian Kelly goes to the SEC, he's going to get killed. Well, again, he's won back-to-back -back, or had back-to-back -back years of 10 wins. Has competed in the SEC championship game. But by the way, which reminds me, Aren't there only two current head coaches that are currently in the SEC as head coaches that have been a head coach and went to the SEC championship game? Hmm. Huh. That being Kirby and Brian Kelly, of course. Because Nick's not here anymore. Yeah, and Dan Mullen went, but he's not here. And they got, he got replaced by Napier. Jimbo, well, he didn't get to it because Texas a and can't win anything. Arkansas. <laughs> Come on, man. Missouri. Stop it. Tennessee. Did Josh Heupel? Oh, wait. No, they lost. South Carolina. Yeah. Shane Beamer is your head coach. Good luck, guy. So, again, I look at Brian, the list of top 10 head coaches and see people. And guys, ESPN is the worldwide leader in sports. That is their slogan. The worldwide leader of sports. I don't know if whoever made that graphic for ESPN isn't the worldwide leader of being an idiot. Because there's no way. Guys, you can debate your top five all you want. You put Brian Kelly at five, make your argument all you want to. I'm not going to agree with you. That's fine. But he deserves to be in there. And what's interesting about that is, guys, even myself included, okay, 
I love the debate. It's my job to debate. It's my job to be critical thinking. It's my job to do this every single day, even though some people try to tell me not to, not to do that. Oh, uh, you, you talk about this too much. No one cares. Well, they care more about me than they do you. And obviously you care about it because I, well, there's no way for you to follow me on social media and yet you continue to find it. Hmm. Very interesting. Maybe it's time to grow up, Peter Pan. Stop being a female. And in high school, you have my number. You know where I'm located. You can come right on by. Stop being a beta. Anywho, I come to a conclusion that I, I you know what social media has done over the last maybe three or four years? I really think that college football Twitter has gotten dumber. I, 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 I really do. Like some of the debates that we that we have, guys, they put Lance Leopold, the head coach of Kansas, above Brian Kelly. Lance Leopold. Lance Leopold. Dan Lanning. Oh, boy, Dan Lanning's a good coach. What does he want? Compared to Brian Kelly, that is. Has he done more than Brian Kelly? No. And for everybody who wants to tell me that, or, you know, I, I think Dan Lanning is going to be a great coach. I think he is a great coach. But right now in its infancy and right now in its history of him being at that program, guys, Mario Cristobal literally won back-to-back Pac-12 championships. He won his, uh, lost his last one to Utah. So in the last three years at Oregon – Mario Cristobal was in the Pac-12 championship game. Do you think that Mario Cristobal at Oregon would have lost back-to-back -back games to Washington? I'm not a 1,000% confident on that. Dan is a young coach, a very inexperienced head coach. And you think that he has enough experience as Brian Kelly, who, by the way, just two years ago, which we vaguely, we, we, we completely forget about, Went for two against Alabama to win the SEC West and converted it in overtime. You can hate Brian Kelly all you want to. And you could say, well, Blake, he's an LSU homer. Of course he's going to say that. If you realistically look at it, and I know that you probably won't because you're probably too lazy to do that. Some of you, oh, well, Blake, he's overrated and overhyped. Overhyped for what? Having seven seasons of 10 wins? Or plus, going to multiple playoffs, he didn't win anything. Okay, well, quite honestly, neither has anybody else at Notre Dame in the last, oh, 40 years. Guys, they haven't been, they haven't been a national championship winner since the 80s. It's not just his him. Marcus Freeman's recruiting better. Well, so is Brian Kelly at LSU. Look, man, you got to give the man respect. And if you're going to put guys like Lance Leopold above him, Dan Lanning above him, please spare me. Please, God, spare me. Take me out back and put me out of my misery. Because it's just a, a, a joke. I, I, it's a joke. Did they, did LSU underperformed to their ability last year 100%. 100%. My question would be I, I, even though I think Georgia should have been in the playoffs, so did Georgia, their aspects of getting the playoff every year. Does Kirby suck? Dan Lanning underperformed at what everybody thought that he could do last year. Does he suck? Ryan Day can't beat Michigan. Does he suck? Kalen DeBoer, okay, that's a lot of recency bias by you. Blake, he lost in a national championship game. Sounds good. He's never coached in the SEC. He's never been in Death Valley at night, which he's going to have to do this year. And I don't care. LSU's probably going to be very competitive. And that game's going to be competitive. And I think that a playoff spot is going to be – when Alabama comes to Death Valley – a playoff spot likely will be on the line. 
And my question is, Kalen, oh, Washington this. You know, it was loud at Washington last year versus Oregon. There is a difference. And I promise you, Death Valley, if LSU has a playoff run against Alabama, they are going to take out every piece of frustration that they have had over the last two decades since Saban has been there. Regardless of what LSU's record is, they're going to do it. But since a playoff will more than likely be on the line there, they're 100% going to do it. But you put him above. You put him at two. I don't think that you can do that. So that is my two cents of it. That is the way that I see it. So, yeah. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But it, it, it's amazing to me that you you have people at ESPN and not you know not just the the national ones. I I, I mean, why are we putting that out there? Like who who approves for that to be out there? 